Howdy folks, thanks for checking in at MrUlrichLandOfBiology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich. In this little video, we're going to be looking at ecological succession. The most logical place to start would be with the definition of succession. So what we're talking about with succession is kind of like the succession of kings, like which king or queen came after the next. Here we're talking about which type of community um, different organisms that inhabit an area um, as that area recovers from some sort of disturbance. Well, there are several different ways that we can categorize the uh, patterns of succession. One way is by making a distinction between primary and secondary succession. In primary succession, the disturbance was severe enough to actually remove the soil. Um, and without soil, it's going to be tough to start the process. Um, so these are going to be pretty extreme situations like volcanoes and landslides and even flooding like we've seen uh, in our local area here around New Paltz and in the Hudson Valley um, with some of the uh, pretty major flooding that we've had relatively recently. Um, so since we're starting without soil, uh, the first organisms that can live in this area have to be able to survive without soil. And there aren't very many that can do this, um, especially around here. Uh, lichens are going to be uh, some of the first organisms since they can, they can really, they don't need any soil at all. Um, they grow on the sides of rocks and sometimes on the sides of trees like we see. Uh, in this photograph here. The lichens are able to do this because they are symbionts, they are uh, or they are a symbiotic relationship. Um, it is a fungus that has a symbiotic algae that lives within it. Um, so as those algaes do their job breaking down the rocks and uh, weathering takes place, um, they're also going to die and uh, decompose themselves and this is going to lead to um, basically their own version of compost. Uh, in this diagram right here, um, this was probably a large rock that had a little depression or a section of bedrock that had a little depression and as the um, as those pioneer lichens died, uh, the depression was deep enough to kind of hold on to little bits of it and over time and um, we got actually the establishing of, uh, you see the little flowering plants in there uh, even. So that is um, a, a little island of primary succession going on right there. Now these first stages are going to take a long time, but as they continue um, with more bits of organic material making up the soil, we can start to see some uh, mosses and ferns. Now the process is beginning to accelerate um, as those mosses and ferns die. Now we get even more of that groovy compost. Um, you get a thicker soil layer and we can start to even support those wildflowers. Still those organisms are going to um, continue to add to the soil um, and now we'll start to have enough soil to support shrubs and trees. As a wider variety of, of producers uh, are, are supported, um, we can certainly start to support uh, consumers, not just passers-by, um, not just part-time residents, but uh, full-time residents, um, and we start to really increase biodiversity. Secondary succession is going to be very similar to primary succession. The difference is going to be the nature of the disturbance that causes the process. Uh, whereas in primary succession, we lose kind of everything, go right down to uh, bare rock. In secondary succession, the disturbance doesn't take away the soil. So things like forest fires um, or even old farming fields or uh, other clearings that are no longer kept clear, um, these will succeed, but uh, it's going to go a lot quicker because we don't have to wait for that whole soil formation process to take place. The lichens are not real quick. Uh, so th since secondary succession in, in some ways can be seen as kind of jumping into the middle of primary succession, we talk about uh, different pioneer species, whereas in primary succession, the pioneer species are things like lichens, um, maybe some mosses. Uh, in secondary succession, we're talking about um, uh, weeds, uh, wildflowers, and uh, the shrubs and small trees. This is one of a couple of different pictures here that I'll show you, uh, diagrams that uh, attempt to show succession. 
Uh, each little brown block here going from left to right shows a different stage in uh, succession in a deciduous forest. Here's a different one, just shows you the a little bit of a time frame here. Um, and once again, we are talking about secondary succession, right? Because we're starting out in year one with annual weeds. Um, if this were primary succession, um, it would take most of that time just to get to the annual weeds uh, stage. This is kind of a, another interesting take on succession. This is more like static succession, whereas uh, in other forms of succession that we've been looking at, it's been kind of one area that has changed in its community. Here we're kind of looking at how as you move from the beach all the way over on the right side of the diagram and kind of walk inland, you will walk through all of the different stages of succession. The beach has no soil or very limited soil, so you're going to be very limited in the types of primary producers that are going to be living there. As you get further inland, there's more opportunities for um, the humus, for the uh, detritus, the, the, the dead grass and stuff to accumulate and start to form some sort of soil which will support the shrub community and then the coniferous forest moving into the beach and maple forest as you get further inland and have more humus and soil to support it. Now primary and secondary succession are going to proceed. Um, these changes are going to take place uh, and, and they're changing because the areas aren't really stable as uh, they make more soil um, that represents a change in the environment and so different organisms are going to be adapted for the changes in the amount of soil and the types of organisms that are moving in as the more soil gives them opportunities to uh, you know be part of that ecosystem and it's going to proceed until we reach this climax community. This is the group of organisms um, that have enough biodiversity to um, be uh, self-supporting. So we call this the stable group of uh, plants and animals. Now up to this point I've been kind of focusing on um, our school's local uh, ecosystem uh, where the climax community would be a hardwood forest or uh, some variety of hardwood forest. Uh, this isn't always the case. Uh, not all ecosystems, not all biomes are proceeding towards a mixed hardwood forest like uh, around New Paltz. Um, you know, uh, in some places we're going to see uh, the climax community just be stop kind of at the grasses level. Um, because the environmental conditions won't really permit the, the growth of big trees or um, cactuses in deserts, cactus forests, quote unquote, uh, in in deserts also represent climax communities. They're very stable and they tend to persist until the next big disturbance. Well, we'll stop there. I think that's enough for now. Um, once again, thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land Biology.com. Um, as always, if you have any feedback or comments, feel free to drop me an email. Uh, my email address is available at uh, www.mrulrichslandofbiology.com and of course go to the website so that you can pick up all kinds of other uh, labs and uh, note sheets and other supporting documents um, that will help you be successful in class. Speaking of which, we'll see you in class.